This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about how to configure Bitcoin Knots to stop relaying Bitcoin spam. What's Bitcoin Knots? It's a free and open source software that allows anyone to run a Bitcoin node on their laptop, desktop, or personal server, which is how you become a self-sovereign Bitcoiner. And if you're not running your own node, it means that you're having to trust someone else's node whenever you interact with the Bitcoin network. If you'd like to know how to install Bitcoin Knots on your laptop or desktop, you can watch this video that I made a few weeks ago. I'll put a link to it in the description notes below, and I'll also put a link to where you can download Bitcoin Knots. And if you know how to verify the signatures and, and verify the hash, you should definitely go ahead and do that as well. But today's video is a follow-up to show you how to configure Bitcoin Knots once you have it installed. Now, the good news is that unlike Bitcoin Core, all of the default settings that come with Bitcoin Knots are great, but it's still a good idea to understand the different ways that you can configure what your node is relaying or filtering. Remember that you are a self-sovereign Bitcoiner and only you get to decide on your own mempool's policy. Every Bitcoin node has its own mempool. There's no such thing as the mempool. So don't let anyone else, and especially don't let the devs at Bitcoin Core tell you otherwise and tell you how you should be configuring your mempool so that it conforms to the spammers that they're trying to please. I could not have made this video without all the new things that I learned from a new video that many of you sent me. I'll show you that video, so be sure to like and subscribe to Satoshi21's new channel. I'll put a link. This was a great video that I'm drawing on heavily in, in this video. Bitcoin Knots, Node Settings, Understand Mempool, Policy, Configuration. So be sure to like and subscribe to Satoshi's new channel. It's quite good. And also follow Satoshi21 uh, at Satoshi21X on uh, on X as well. Follow along with Satoshi's video if you're using Start9. That's what she focuses on. In this video, I'm going to cover how to do it. How to do it on Bitcoin Knots running on this MacBook Pro. I usually use my Start9, but for the purposes of this, and because my previous video showed you how to do this on a MacBook Pro, I want to follow up and do the configuration on Bitcoin Knots running on this MacBook Pro. Basically, you go over to Bitcoin Knots. Let's. I have it installed here, and it's all or it's almost all synced up because I just reopened my laptop. And then you go up here to preferences. And the main thing we're gonna be focusing on, I'm running a prune node here. You should run a full node if you can. And that's the nice thing about a start nine server. It makes it much easier to do that without taking up a lot of uh, storage space on your laptop. But we're gonna be focusing today on the spam filtering tab, which is something that only, uh, only Bitcoin Knots has. Bitcoin Core uh, really doesn't have this. So let's go down here. The one thing, uh, one reminder here, you can hover over a relevant item for an explanation. So for example, I want to reject parasite transactions, definitely. If I hover over that, it says, with this option enabled, transactions related to parasitic overlay protocols will be ignored. Parasites are transactions using Bitcoin as a technical infrastructure to animate other protocols unrelated to ordinary money transfers. Otherwise, uh, obviously, ordinary Bitcoin money transfers. So that's one way you can go through here. I'm going to be touching on a bunch of them that Satoshi touched on as well. So we first have op return, which is really what started this whole debate, also known as data carrier size. This is that very small space that's given as a concession to those who want to store arbitrary data on chain. And the problem with Bitcoin Core is they want to blow open this, blow open this filter. This filter was originally 40 bytes or 42 bytes if you count the opcode as well even in Bitcoin Core back in uh, 2014, I believe it was. And Bitcoin Knots preserves this historical setting. Uh, so if you want to adjust this, you can go to where it says ignore transactions with additional data larger than. So let's go down here. One of the things I didn't realize when I first started using Knots is you can scroll up and down here. At first, I thought this was the whole menu, but you can use the bar or scroll down here. And this is the point. This is the uh, data carrier size you want to focus on here. Ignore transactions with additional data larger than 42 bytes. So I have this set to the historical setting. You could also set this to zero. I personally have no problem with the return being used for a small amount of data, 40, 42 bytes, somewhere around there. That gives you enough for SHA-256 hash, whose output is only 32 bytes. And so it is an interesting thing that you can anchor uh, things in terms of timestamp being on the Bitcoin blockchain, or that you can put a hash of a document in a previous video. I showed you how you could hash the Declaration of Independence and then uh, 
take it down to a size of 32 bytes, which you could put in op return. So I'm going to leave this at 42 for now. This is something that we can change over time and we can try to adapt to the spammers. You can also set this to zero as well. That's what um, some of the more, I would say, more conservative Bitcoin Knots runners were doing. Zero to 42 bytes allows for a small hash to be stored there, but not enough space for spammers. You get to decide what works for best for your own beliefs. I should emphasize that. Next thing we're going to look at, ignore bare exposed multi-sig scripts and that is right up here ignore bare exposed multi-sig scripts you definitely want to have that checked and that's not going to interfere with modern multi-sig this is more of a old-fashioned way of doing it and this is something that I, I don't think has ever been closed in bitcoin core but if it if it hasn't it should be reject parasite transactions filters out transactions designed to waste your nodes resources like low fee spam and dust outputs i believe we already did that in the same um, the same one at the beginning, reject parasite transactions. Believe that's the same one. Um, ignore transactions involving non-Bitcoin token slash asset overlay protocols. That's this one right here. I have that checked. You definitely want to do that. Ignore transactions with values that would cost more to spend at a fee rate of 3,000 sats. So this is basically dust. And the way to do this is you can go down uh, to the bottom here. Ignore transactions with values that would cost more to spend at a fee rate of 3,000 sats. So you can you can change that. I believe I have it there at the default setting. So those are the basic settings. That's really all you need to do. We'll be covering this in more depth. And if you look at Satoshi's video, she does some stuff that it looks to me, I couldn't figure out how to do all of it on Bitcoin Knots. You can definitely uh, do it. It looks a little easier to do if you're using Bitcoin Knots directly, um, uh, indirectly through her Start9 server. But these are the important things. And the nice thing about Bitcoin Knots, you can use it out of the box and most of these settings will be correct anyway. Um, let's just go through here really quickly and see if there's anything else uh, I forgot to mention. If we scroll up here, ignore unrecognized receiver scripts. We already talked about parasite transactions, non-token, uh, non-Bitcoin token transactions. Um, and I think I think the rest of these are basically the defaults. We might be going into more of these later, especially as spammers try to update what they're doing. This is always going to be a cat and mouse game, but we can adjust very, very quickly, much more quickly than VC companies, VC funded companies can. Even better way to run Bitcoin Knots, as I said, in the, the main way that I run it and other related services, like running a Lightning node, running your own version of Bitwarden, running your own instance of mempool, these sort of things, is to buy or build a personal server that runs the free Start9 operating system called StartOS, which you can download and install on anything for free. This, this operating system will allow, or having a Start9 server, will allow your Bitcoin node to be always online monitoring what's going on. Whereas if you have it on a laptop like this, you're going to probably close it at times. It's not really meant to be open all the time, but a Bitcoin node, especially if you want to be filtering transactions and relaying transactions, really should be online all the time. And if you're running Lightning, it definitely needs to be online all the time. Uh, so you want your, your Bitcoin node to be online, downloading the latest blocks, filtering the latest transactions, unlike a laptop or desktop. It's also nice to have your node and other apps on a dedicated machine that's separate from your heavily surveilled Windows or Mac environment. Start OS is Linux-based, of course, but when you have a Start9 server, you can basically call into it from your laptop or desktop or phone remotely. You can even call into it over Tor and access it that way. So that's another argument for having some sort of separate machine that runs your Bitcoin node. I have this server one that I bought a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, these occasionally do go on sale, I believe. The server pure is what you want to get. That's the one I wish I'd gotten because they've done something to disable the Intel chip and take the uh, spy software if there is any out of that as well. It is at a higher price point. And then you have to decide how much memory to get with this. You, I believe the minimum is one gig. To sort of future-proof it, you should probably get two gigs. So you can either buy a Start9 server. They're also do-it-yourself solutions. You can do it on a Raspberry Pi, though I'm not sure that works as well as it used to. You can buy it on a, you can install it, I believe, on a Mac Mini. But I'll put a link to this uh, in the description notes below. And there's a DIY section here as well. So you don't necessarily have to buy it from Start9. If you enjoy tinkering, you can build your own. If you have the money and just want to get started and just write a check, then getting a Start9 server is a really fun way to do it. We should all try and support great companies like Start9 that are run by brilliant and ethical Bitcoiners. And I should say at the outset here, I am not receiving any compensation from Start9. I don't know Matt Hill. 
um, though we do follow each other online and I do admire the work he's doing, but I'm not being compensated in any way. I paid for my own Start9 server. So when I recommend a company in general on this channel, it's because I like them and use them and I don't receive compensation. I have no sponsors, no advertisers. My only income from this is YouTube, uh, YouTube ad income and selling courses and books. So I think we should all try to support great companies like Start9 who've also had the courage to speak out as Matt Hill has against Bitcoin spam in this environment. He really knocked it out of the park in this video. I'll put a clip here. This was on the Home Mining Podcast, which I've just discovered, and I must say I'm really enjoying it. So check out this clip in which he talks about op return and spam. Be sure to listen to and follow the Home Mining Podcast as well. I've begun to learn quite a bit from it. And then you could follow Matt Hill, uh, CEO, co-founder of Start9 as well on uh, on X. He's really criminally underfollowed with less than 5,000 followers. So be sure to follow him. Also a link to in the description notes below, I'll link to another video by Satoshi, Satoshi21. This is how to switch from Bitcoin Core to Knots if you're ready running Bitcoin Core on Start9. So that's a nice video that's under five minutes. And I'll link as well again to Cole's video, Southern Bitcoiners video, how to run Bitcoin knots on Start9 and replace Bitcoin Core. This was another good video, as well as BT Sessions' longer video about how to run Bitcoin knots, uh, how to figure out how to run it on desktop, laptop, Umbral, or Start9 as well. So check out that resource. And then Mayank Chabra, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, has a nice post here uh, reminding BTC Sessions how you can switch on Umbral, if you're running Bitcoin Core on Umbral, how you can switch to Bitcoin Knots without having to re-download and resync the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's also very useful as well. All these resources, as I said, will be in the description notes below this video here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.